bring the nation back to God. The United Kingdom has always been a Christian nation. The foundation was built on Christ. We need to rediscover our great heritage and we are asking you to rise up and stand with Bring the Nation Back to God. Please call 0800 043 0464 now and register today. We are praying for 100,000 prayer partners to be raised up. For any love gift amount, we would also like to send you Jonathan Miller's new book, Heal to Minister, which will teach you such things as don't allow your past to hold you captive, forgiving, discover who you are in Christ, and much more. So please call 0800 043 0464 now. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Bring the nation back to God. Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Welcome once again to this um, important program on your TV, Bring the Nation Back to God. I am Wali Babatsunde, your host. In the last few months, we have been um, taking a look at my book, Great Men and Women That Made Britain Great. Great Men and, Brit and Women That Made Great Britain Great. Um, we have been looking at the lives of some men and women that help build this country. The lives of some men and women that help bring transformation, that help bring greatness to our nation. I always say to people, uh, did you realize that um, Britain is the only nation that has great before its name? It's not by coincidence, it's not by accident. I believe it's because of some men, and they were not just ordinary men, they were men that were changed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And men and women that thought that, well, after receiving Christ as Lord and personal Savior, we owe our fellow human beings um, the duty, the responsibility of transforming, of changing their life, of impacting the society. We've looked at so many men. I remember we began to look at the gospel of the kingdom of God. And I submitted to us that what is missing today in the church of Jesus Christ is the gospel of the kingdom. Too often we're preaching it about our church. Too often we're preaching it about ourselves. It's become a personality issue. Uh, whereas many of our forebears, some of the great men and women that this nation produced, they understood the gospel of the kingdom. And I remember saying that the gospel of the kingdom has two spheres. Uh, uh, proclamation and also social action. That's why we, uh, um, every plane has two wings for ballot. And we've been learning a lot from the life of these men and women of God. Today, I want to bring a very, very important personality you know, one of the great men that changed the history of this nation, not just the history of London as a great city, uh, not just the history of Britain as a great nation, but his influence taught many, many nations of the, of the world, including Africa. But I want to read two scriptures very quickly to, uh, to give us like a summary, a background of the life of this man, and um, the kind of work that he did with his institution. I want to read, first of all, the book of Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah 58 from verse number 12. It says, Loose the bands of wickedness. Undo the heavy burden. Let the oppressed go free. Break every yoke. Deal thy bread to the hungry. Bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. When thou seest the naked, cover him and hide not thyself from thy own flesh. Draw out thy soul to the hungry. They that be of thee shall build the old waste places and thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Well, I'm sure many of us know that scripture very well. It's the scripture in Isaiah 50, 58 when God was speaking to the people of the importance of fasting. 
Fasting is not just about, you know, uh, praying to God, but it's also ministering to the poor people in the society. I want us to read one more scripture, which is James, the book of James, chapter 2, verse um, 14 downwards. The book of James, chapter 2, from verse number 14. It says, What does it profit, my brethren, though a man says he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead being alone let me just read one more verse verse number 18 yeah a man may say that thou hast faith and i have works show me thy faith without thy works and i will show thee my faith by my works james says in the scripture that our faith should have an outward walking our faith should lead to helping the poor our faith is not complete if all we do is to proclaim the gospel and we see people who are destitute of daily food we see people who are downtrodden people who are out out out, out in our society people who who are marginalized people who are abused you know in our society and we do not do anything in other words our faith is not valid ladies and gentlemen and that is why the man that i want to bring to us is a man that inspires me so much one of the great men that great britain has produced this man has impacted this nation and so many nations of the earth the man was called william boot william boot and william boot was the founder of salvation army the salvation army um william booth founded the salvation army in 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 east end of london and um, um the salvation army um church or institution affected not just only london but also many parts of the world you know the salvation army was initially um, established in the east end of london with the name East London Revival Society. It was founded in 1864. In 1878, the society was reorganized and later christened as the Salvation Army. And the focus of the Salvation Army in those days, and I believe up to a large extent up to now, was to focus on the hopeless, the helpless, those who are depressed, people who are uh, uh, who are the outcast of the society, uh, you know, and I want to say something very quickly here. If you look at the gospel of Jesus Christ that we preach today, the gospel of Jesus Christ as contained in the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ that the early church preached was the gospel that was biased towards the poor. Let me repeat this. The gospel that Jesus gave to us, the gospel that the early church preached was a gospel that was biased to the poor. You know, on the uh, mount, seven on the mount, Matthew says, blessed are the poor. In Luke, you know, um, blessed are the poor in spirit. In Luke, it says, blessed are the poor. And if you look at the Lucan gospel, there was an emphasis on people who were poor, people who were marginalized. In other words, there is something about the gospel of Jesus Christ that is biased towards the poor. In actual fact, if you look at the prophets of old, one of the greatest things they rose up to speak against was against the fat cat. And the people who did not take care of the poor people in the society. They were condemned. People who did not take care of the marginalized. People who have been disarmed. People who do not 
have a means of livelihood. And this is where, this is where the ministry of William Booth comes to fall. The, the ministry of Salvation Army. You know, for any one of us to appreciate uh, the life and the ministry of William Booth and Salvation Army, you need to go back to the 19th century. What was the prevailing situation? What was London like? What was Britain like? You know, in the 18th century, um, it, it, was, it was particularly in the east end of London. Poverty was very, very rife. Many people will go without food on a daily basis. And you know, the terrible thing about it was that the church, particularly the established church, neglected these people. They only focused on the rich and the famous in our society. I'm sure that tells you something today. You know, in many parts of this city, in many parts of this nation, and in many parts of the world, we do neglect the poor. We do neglect the outcasts. We do neglect the people who do not have power in our society. And one of the reasons I believe that the gospel that we are preaching today is important. One of the reasons I believe, particularly in Great Britain, one of the reasons why we are not touching the society the way we should is because many of us are proclaiming the gospel. Many of us are preaching the gospel. And ladies and gentlemen, let me say this. There is nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with the proclamation of the gospel. We have been called by God to proclaim the gospel. But that is just 50% of our job. Without adding works. Without ministering to the physical needs of people. We have not done a complete job. And that was what William Booth did. And you know, uh, William Booth in his book has given us a kind of background of the prevalent situation in this nation and indeed the west end of London, uh, the east end of London, what transpired before the Salvation Army was raised up. And I'm just going to read from my book uh, just, just for us to see the background of what happened in this nation before God raised William Booth in the east end of London. And um, he's written in his book, Dark, Darkest England. And I'm just going to read a quote from my book. William Booth writes, General Booth writes, Darkest England may be described as consistent broadly of three circles, one within the other. The outer and the widest circle is inhabited by the starving and the homeless. I wanted to look. The first circle was inhabited by the starving and the homeless. But honest and poor. The second by those who live by vice. And the third and innermost region at the center is people by those who exist by crime. It seems from the picture that General Booth paints of the 19th century, it was a very, very um, dark situation. You know, many people were starving. Many people were hungry. Many people were overtaken by, by vice and all kinds of evil in our society. Well, nothing has changed today in many parts of our nation and indeed many parts of the world. You know, just as in those days, there was a gulf, you know, between the rich and the poor. The rich people were getting richer and the poor people were getting poorer. And guess what? What was the role of the church? What did the church do? I'm sure you can guess. As usual, as the church will always do, they supported the rich people. They neglected the poor people. And this was what William Boots did. God raised up this man 
in the east end of London. In actual fact, it was said that around that time, there were over 500, over 500 philanthropic organizations in the east end of London alone, and they were spending, uh, you know, approximately about 3.5 million, and that did not do anything at all. So it was very, very bad. In fact, there was no, no, no other place in this nation that the poverty was more pronounced than in the east end of London. And this was the place that General Booth chose to start the Salvation Army. You know, I just want to stop there for a moment and just to challenge us, just to reflect on something. Today, we want to, we want to put our churches in a place that is full of light. You know, we want to mingle with the kings and the queen. You know, but Jesus always went to where people were. The, the, the people who were poor, the people who were marginalized, that was where this man went to. Well, I'm going to take a short break right now. And when we resume, I will continue on the next part. Bring the nation back to God. When an individual seeks God, it produces an anointing. But when a generation seeks God, it births an awakening. Join Faith TV to raise up 100,000 prayer warriors to bring our nation back to God. If we're to make an impact on this nation, we need your help, both in prayer and financially. Register with us and each month we'll send you a prayer sheet and newsletter, as well as becoming a prayer warrior and covenant partner. This nation used to be known as the land of hope and glory, and missionaries were sent from here and touched the world. But we need a move of God now to restore this nation to godliness. Bring the nation back to God. For too long we've sat back and become the passive majority. Now is the time to make a stand. I'm sure your heart burns like mine when you read in the news and see the state of our nation today. But the battle we're in is not primarily natural, it's spiritual, and we need a spiritual solution. To register, log on to faithworldtv.com and click on UK for God.